Hey, blessings and peace. This is Kenneth Kim Young, Restoration Millennial. I am indeed happy today. I praise God. I'm excited about this word. It's going to change your life. It's going to change your life. And I thank God for you tuning in today. I trust that you have done like others have done. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, share, like, and comment. Invite your friends to uh, tune in to Restoration Millennial with Dr. Kenneth and Young. Listen, I'll be glad. You'll be glad. Somebody who you share with is going to be glad because this word is going to change their life. And listen, uh, if you support us, we can continue to do the work of the Lord. And God is doing great things to us. You can cash app us at Dr. Uh, K30, Dr. K30, cash app, Dr. Kenneth and Young. You can find me on there. Uh, this, let's get right into this word, Ezekiel chapter 47. Uh, verse 1. Listen, this uh, text is kind of difficult to understand, so I chose the message translation because I think it make it more plain to you. All right, here we go. Uh, afterwards, he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward. From the forefront of the house, stood toward the east and the waters came down from under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. God, our Father, our help in ages past, hope for years to come. Be thy steel, Lord, our strength and shield. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me. Break me, melt me, mold me. Speak through my vocal cords, dear God. Think through my thoughts that it be all of you that we might be edified from this word and you'll be glorified and your people said together, amen. Yes, uh, permission for the next dimension. God is ready to do some supernatural things in your life and he's given you permission to do that. He's given you permission to go to the next dimension and you should be excited because this is your time. This is your season. He's ready to do it for you. Guess what? Let me tell you what he's done. You want to know what he's done? He's opened the floodgates of heaven. I said he's opened the floodgates of heaven to bring a blessing on your life that's going to be a supernatural blessing. When others see it, they'll be wild by it. And God only wants you to be wild, uh, saying wow, because you have spent time in his presence. You've been hearing from him. You felt his peace. You followed the line, lined up with the word of God. So God want to know, can you handle what he's getting ready to do. Can you handle being debt free? Can you handle being the head and not the tail, above and not the beneath, to be the lender and not the borrower? Because God wants you to be blessed coming in, blessed going out. He wants you healed by Jesus Christ. He wants peace in your home. He wants promotion on your job. He wants you to have that new car if you want. He wants you to go back to school to get that education. Have your kids educated. Go to the next dimension. Can you handle how you handle the small stuff will determine how you handle the big stuff. And so the Bible says, do not despise the day of small beginnings. So God has a plan to get you, get me, get us in the position. And your position, our position is paramount to the blessings of God. So God will release certain blessings in certain places. And you be in the right place, not so much the physical location, the geographical location, but the mindset. You're in the right place so God can bring you to the next level because he can depend on you to be a blessing to his people. So you have been in the position. God has determined your next move. And God has promised that the promise would come and once he give you the promised blessing, then there will be a test of that promise to see whether you believe him that, that God has been telling you the truth. So how you handle the test on one level will determine how he will bring permission, provision for the next level. And remember, all the promises of God are yes and amen. So very first thing of this message is you must allow God to prepare you. Repeat that after me. I must allow God to prepare me. Write that in the comment section. I'm going to discuss God preparing us through four levels. One ankle deep level, then the knee deep level, then the waist deep level, then so deep you have to swim in it. Yes, there it is. Uh, God has got you on that level. No matter what level you're on, you are going to the next dimension. God has given you permission for the next dimension. And then position... The position that you're in, will God 
see where he can promote you. About 40 years ago, as in the military, you know, uh, 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 Intel Communications. So in Vicenza, Italy, I would go to, I've been to Rome to preach. God has blessed me tremendously to travel through Europe to preach. I preached in, in, in Venice. I preached in Livorno. Uh, and, and I would go to Venice like every other week. But when God was showing me this vision of carrying me out in the water, Beyond the buoys, the buoys are where the mark of the deep was very deep, the channel where the ships come. And I was afraid, I was frightened. You no, know, it's not God that give us a spirit of fear, but a power, a love, and a sound mind. The fear that gripped my life was that I could be swept out the sea, unable to navigate my way back to safety, that I'd be too tired of swimming and drown out in the deep water. But God is never trying to drown us or to destroy us. God is trying to get us in the deep level. He wants to dive deeper, go deep into the things of God, dig a little deeper. So, so here it is. A Marion Williamson says that in a poem about fear, our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. She said, it is not our darkness that frightens us. It is our light that's most frightens us. And by us shrinking, uh, to people don't be offended. We do no do the world no good by shrinking. Because when I let my light shine, our unconscious give permission to others to do the same also. It's not just in some of us, but it's in all the children. It's in God's all manif God wants to manifest the glory in our lives. So going out to the next dimension in the deep. So get ready to experience the next dimension with God. So the then the next point, point number two, the door represents opportunity. Opportunity is access to things that you were not privileged to before. You were not mature enough to handle, but God see that you trusted him. You stayed in the process. You, 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 you accepted his decisions. Although sometimes it's uncomfortable, you did not get out of the process. You stayed in the process. You matured in the process. So now God has given you an open door. Understand this. This it's not the first time God been speaking to you, but God wanted to be a now season. Now means no opportunity wasted. This moment, God wants to extend greater opportunity to you because you've shown maturity, that you can handle the small stuff. So how you handle the small stuff will determine how you handle the big stuff. Why? Because the Bible said, you be faithful over little, I make you ruler over much. So it qualifies you promotion to the next level because you've handled the small stuff. You handled at the ankle deep level. You handled the small stuff. So God is ready. You know, the ankles are significant because ankles give you support. They support the body. And so what, what, the why you had to go through the ankle deep level is like being in kindergarten. Kindergarten, they don't change class because they get lost in the mix of the other student. They remain in that class all day, all subject, math, English, science, geography, in the same class, you know, because they don't want to get lost. God don't want us to get lost in the mix. When he got you at the ankle deep level, at the kindergarten level, he's trying to teach you the foundation of the kindergarten. So once you get the foundation of the kindergarten, then God will bring you up to the next level. The next level is the knee deep level. The knee deep level is like being in middle school. You know, middle school is tough. I, I've taught school, and I think middle school is the toughest grade level that anybody can endure while in school, you know, uh, before you get to college and that kind of thing, high school. The middle school is tough. Kids are, are cruel. They're brutal. They have no filters. So God know you've gone through some experiences that have been brutal, like being in middle school, a spirit that had no filter, that didn't care about your feelings. That was God developing you in the process. He was making you. He was making you into the image that he wanted you to be, like being on the potter's wheel. He put you back on the potter's wheel. And the story is told by this cup once that this person was traveling in Europe and he wanted to bring a gift back home to his wife. So what he did, he went into this gift shop and he found this beautiful cup. He got that beautiful cup. He took that cup and he carried it, had a gift wrap. And he, and he, and he took the cup with him. He got on the plane and he, and he got, he was, he was so happy about that cup. He began to tell himself he made a good decision to buy his wife a beautiful gift of this beautiful cup. And as he began to talk to this cup, this cup began to talk back to him. The cup said, yes, you know, you see me as a beautiful 
of the Zion. You see me, how I am sparkling, how I will make your wife happy. But do you know what I had to go through to get to this? Well, my powder, the powder took me, put me on the wheel. He beat me. He beat me, mixed me up, mixed, put me on the wheel and, and took me out and beat me and spent some more on the wheel and beat me, took me out. Then he put me in the kelv, put me in the kelv, in the oven to bake me in that hot, in that kelv, in that oven. But he took me out the kelv in the oven, then he, then, then he beat me some more. He beat me some, beat the, beat the lumps out while I was hot, sweating. In that cab, and I got out. He beat me, beat the lumps out, and then he put me back in the cab again. When he put me back in the fire again, then he took me back out the fire. He put varnish on me to shine me up, make me look beautiful. You don't know what I've been through. I've been through the fire. I've been in the heat. I've been in the storm. I've been in the rain. But God brought me out. He was faithful to never leave me nor forsake me. So God wants you to know because you survived at the middle school, at the knee deep level, that the mission is possible. You're ready to take on the assignment of greater importance, greater significance. That's being at the waist deep. And like being in high school, you're not on your own, but the possibilities are very close to being on you. You're halfway there. Just like when you're waist deep, you're between your ribs and your hips. You're no longer dependent on the stronger portion of your body to make it through the tough time. You're listening to God because if God don't help me, I'm not going to make it through what I'm going through. The Bible said, not by power, nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That's why we got to do. Then and Proverbs say, well, you got to protect your heart. Protect what's coming in your eye gate. Protect what's coming in your ear gate. For uh, Proverbs 4 and 23 say, above all, guard your heart, for out of your heart affects everything that you do. Then we got to not only watch our heart, guard our heart, but as God is promoting us, giving us greater responsibility, that's a great thing. You got, you'll become a person of influence. People hear your name and they say, I want to be a part of that ministry. I want to be under that teaching because why? We stand under what we understand. So, and then they said, first Peter five and seven said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. God will lift you up. But you got to be willing to humble yourself. Humble yourself means to cast all of your cares upon him because why? He cares for you. Then once the mission is possible, your dependence leads to your productive. Your dependence upon God leads to you being productive. So it said it was a river too deep to cross without swimming. That's what God wants you at. At that deep level of understanding the deep things of God or diving deep into the things of God. Not to be clouded with a mystery. He wants you to teach with revelation knowledge. He wants you to live with revelation knowledge because revelation shifts the atmosphere. What was impossible became possible because you got a revelation from God. Your dependence is upon God. It's a God thing. And so Ezekiel was as productive swimming as he was at the ankle deep. That's what God wants you to be. He wants you to remember from where you've come. Remember the small days. Remember, although God is growing you up, God is maturing you, God can trust you with more. He wants you to remember that when you was at the ankle deep, you had to trust him. Now you're at the uh, swimming level. You still got to trust him even more. It's the Holy Spirit that guide us. God said, I will guide you with my eye. My mom's favorite pastor stripper was Proverbs. Three, five, and six. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. So the overflow and the refreshing from the presence of God as Joel 3 and 18 talks about how the Lord will bring a refreshing from his very presence that if you can believe it, God said, I will do it then it's worth the wait to get the answer from God. Said so they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount up with eagle wings, run and not be weary, walk and not faint. So that God knows you can handle this level. He's ready to give you permission to go to the next dimension. He's ready to release you into the greater things of God. He's ready to release you in the change in the mindset of people. He's ready to release you in the financial literacy of understanding finance, understanding money, understanding currency, because you've learned to trust him. 
I trust in the Lord with all my heart. I lean not to my own understanding. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I want to close with this story of Mephisto Fez and Faust. It's a painting in the London Art Gallery. Mephisto Fez is the devil and Faust is the Christian. They are playing chess. And Mephisto Fez has Faust in checkmate. And everybody know in chess, if you're in checkmate, the game is all over. But just so happened that was a young man, a chess champion, came from the Eastern Bloc. He studied the painting. He looked at the painting for one dimension, looked at another. He yelled, it's a lie. It's a lie. I can see that the king has another move. And that's what I want to tell you today. Whatever you're going through, King Jesus has another move. Financial lack, King Jesus has another move. You want to complete your education, King Jesus has another move. You want a promotion on your job, King Jesus has another move. Whatever you want to do, King Jesus has another move. He has a blessing with your name on it because he's granted you access to things that you weren't privileged to previously. He's ready to take you to the next level. And are you ready to go to the next level? You can handle this. I know you will. I know you can. Let me pray for you. God, our Father, I thank you for taking us to the next dimension. Thank you, God, for giving us the invitation that we've came through the ankle deep. We've came through the knee deep. We've come through the waist deep. We've come now to the level where we have to swim through it to get what we you want us to do to access the great things, have greater access into the lives of people, that we will be responsible with the lives of people. We will guide them to your, your truth, your eternal, eternal truth that will make a difference in their life that can never be erased. We thank God in Jesus' name do we pray. Listen, this has been Restoration Millennium. Kenneth and Young, continue to support us. You know, uh, follow us on YouTube. Keep us in your prayers and keep, stay tuned in because the best is on its way and your permission to the next level, next dimension is about to occur. Thank you.